Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to my cybersecurity show. And this is my Port Swigger Academy series. If you remember the, uh, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. The first episode of this was how to do the path traversal lab. It was a walkthrough on that lab specifically, and we used the browser to do it, but it was a little anticlimactic. It didn't, it didn't have a lot of, you know, zip, pizzazz, oomph to it. There, there was no snap to that demonstration. It was just, we win, yay. Right? But I, I kind of wanted you to see a little bit more and give you a little bit different perspective of how you could solve that lab. And like I said before, we use the browser to do that. In this episode, we're gonna use Burp Suite itself. So fire up your Kali, fire up, fire up your Parrot, or if you've got it installed in Windows, whatever the case is, we need to get Burp Suite up and running so that we can solve this lab. Let's jump into things right away, shall we? I've already logged into Port Swigger Academy, or the Web Security Academy, as it were, as you can see right around this area. And I have refound myself in the lab right here. I just wanna make sure you can see everything. And again, the lab contains a path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images, and we're looking to retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. So, we have our marching orders. Now we just need to fire up our system. If you've never used Burp Suite before, this is not a tutorial for that. So I'm gonna assume that you know how to install or you have Burp Suite ready to go and how to make it work with your browser, which is basically configuring the browser's proxer set, proc, proxer, proxy settings, or you're using an add-in, something like Foxy Proxy. Foxy Proxy is very popular for doing something like this, but they're not the only game in town. So find some solution that allows you to proxy through your attack proxy, Burp Suite that in this case. I'm going to use Foxy Proxy. I've already set that up. All I have to do is hit my proxy on button. And now everything is being proxied through Burp Suite. But I don't have Burp Suite up and running. That's the second thing you'll need to do is actually fire up Burp Suite. For me, since I'm running Parrot, I go to Applications. I find the pen testing dropdown move over to most used tools and find Burp Suite CE. Again, your mileage may vary depending on what distribution you're using and how you've got Burp Suite installed, but get that up and running. Bada bing, I hit the, hit the button. I'm gonna get some, hey, I can probably, don't show this again, that's fine. And then, I'll wait for it, I'm gonna get some more about saving the lab. This is probably out of date. Yeah, it's gonna compl complain about updating. But I don't care about updating right now. I just want to do the lab for you good folks. I can start a project, but, or can I? Because it's a temporary project. Disk-based projects are only supported on Burp Suite Professional. Well, what are you going to do? No big deal. Hit next. And then I can use the defaults or load a configuration file. I just want to just start Burp. Just get to it. Shall we? Starting the project. Let's go. I'm fired up. I don't know about y'all. But I want to I want to see a little bit more of the action here. I want to see that I won because kind of as we saw in the, in the in the other episode when we just used the browser, we had to have Port Swigger tell us you did this. There's like a lab solved button, and the banner pops up saying "Congratulations, you solved the lab." But if we didn't have those helps, we'd think oh, I guess that doesn't work, or does it? Right, and I kind of made the, the mention that being able to do this in multiple different ways using multiple tools is helpful because something may may be visually there that you didn't see in one tool versus another. So that's that's why we want to do this. All right, Burp Suite is up and running. So now what we need to do is find the proxy tab, which is right around hello, right around here. Click proxy. The intercept is on, uh, I think, by default. You can change that setting if you like. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to go to this HTTP history, and this is where everything will kind of propagate. Anytime I make a request via HTTP through the proxy, it should log all that stuff here, and I can use that for my fun and profits. So let's access the lab now that everything is running. And once that gets going, I could probably already start seeing stuff in Burp Suite. Yeah, and you can see HTTPS portswigger.net, and it is grabbing that. I can click on this request. I can 
see the request has been made. There's the response. And oh my goodness, look at all this craziness. And I could technically do, I could solve the lab, solve the lab from here, but it, it's a little messy. It's a little, it's a little too much, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clear this out, clear the history. And that way it's, it's nice and clean and clear. Let's go back to the lab itself because here is the, the web app, the shop. It's an eShop, right? We see that. We saw that before. We have items, we can buy them. We can hit view details. And that takes me to that items page, showing me the price and the star rating and an image of said item. And this will just make it a little bit easier, just like we did before. Uh, we don't get a lot of, we don't have to sift through a lot. It's easier to see this way. So I've got this image here. If I go to Burp Suite, I don't see it. I see the product ID. I see the Academy lab header and I can click on these and see the responses, but there's the requests and the same here. But I'm not seeing that, that image actually being requested, but I know it was because it's there, okay? So how do we get that? Well, let's go back to under proxy, hit that intercept tab, which is right here for me. Again, your mileage may vary. Just look in the tabs, they'll be there. And I'm gonna turn the intercept back on. And now I gotta do is go back to my web page, hit refresh so that it re-requests that page. And you'll notice it's not doing anything. It's kind of like waiting because Burp Suite is waiting. Burp Suite, what do you want? Oh, look, here is the request. Do I want to forward it? Do I want to drop it? What kind of action? Maybe open it in a browser. I can do all sorts of stuff. Well, this is for the product ID page equals one. I'm just going to forward that on because it's not the image. I'm, I'm looking for that image request. So I'm going to forward that. And here, oh, look, get image file name, so on and so forth, right? So there it is right there. You can see I've selected that text over here in the selected text area of the inspector. And now I can modify this. Since it hasn't been sent along yet, I can change this value in real time. I don't want it to be 30.jpg. I want it to be dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash. Remember, this is a path traversal. So we're going to do that path traversal thing we do, that voodoo that you do, right? Dot, dot, slash. And I'm going to dot, dot, slash my brains out just to make sure that I'm getting up to the the end of the directory tree, which is the root directory. I want to I want to find myself there so that I can go back down into Etsy and grab that password file. So dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and just go like buck wild with that. From there, Etsy slash password, and then I forward that on. I can forward on the next thing. It looks like that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the, proc, uh, the intercept at that point. I'm sorry, let's go back. Uh, I don't need to go to the web page. I now need to go to the HTTP history. And from there, I can see there's the request for that file, right? 30.jpg. There's the original request. And right next to it is our good friend, the response. And in that response, what do we see? Oh my goody goodness. A little more action for us. A little more like, ooh, something happened. And I can see it. That's super nice. And that's why we like tools like Burp Suite. Because I don't know if y'all can see that really well or not, but look at this. I'm gonna, I should probably change, let's let's do this. Let's change it this way. I just hit the layout here. So now it's top and bottom instead of side by side, which will give us a little more real estate left and right. And we can see, oh look, there's users right here. We've got Peter. I've got Carlos, I've got user, I've got Elmer, I've got Academy, I've got service accounts like, um, what is that? System D, Postgres, MongoDB. There's lots of fun stuff. I'm learning all sorts of wonderful things about this web application now that I can read the Etsy password file. And that could be useful for me. That's gonna be definitely something I'm gonna put in my findings when I write this up if I were doing a bug bounty uh, disclosure or if this was a pen test for a web application, I would want to write that up. So there you go. We win, obviously. I bet if we go back here, we can see, did, did it do a banner? No, it didn't do the banner for us. And it does say not solved, but we absolutely did this. And it absolutely worked because I requested the 
Etsy password page or file. And there it is right there in Burp Suite. It's cool that Burp doesn't, or that uh, Port Swigger Academy doesn't see that. We want to get it solved. We know we can use the browser and that will actually work. I'm, I can probably uh, use Burp Suite for this. I just wanted to be able to show you that this is what it looks like in real life land when you request something through a path reversal and it returns. It, it shows up a whole lot nicer inside of something like Burp Suite. So there we go, ladies and gents. This has been fun. I'm glad you stopped by. We will have more in this this uh, Port Swigger Web Security Academy series. Like I said, I'm going to go through every single one of the labs and do a walkthrough. I'll probably use the browser. I'll probably use uh, Burp Suite and a lot of stuff. Just depends on how I want to solve it. Maybe I'll do both kind of like I did here. Maybe I'll throw a wasp zap on the fire because why not? There's no law. You can't tell me what to do. It's my house, right? And maybe you're a zap user or you want to be a zap user. And you're like, hey, show me how to do that in zap. I'm here to help. It's my job. And I'm happy to do it. Thanks, everybody, for dropping by. That is this episode, calling it a day. And we'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep hacking.